So we deal with um, the court of the European Union. Um, last time we have mentioned that today the general name of the courts is the Court of Justice of the EU. It includes today the Court of Justice and General Court. Uh, we have um, spoken about the structures of these courts. Uh, we have spoken about the judges and advocate generals. We have spoken about how they were established, etc. Today, we start with the jurisdiction of these courts, uh, what they do and what, are, what their functions are. We started with the functions last time. We have started to discuss the functions of the courts of the EU last time. No. Yes, I remember that, no? It interprets the EU. Exactly. We have started the, with the functions of the EU courts. What they do in the EU legal system. First thing you have mentioned was that they interpret EU law. Um, as we have indicated, the European Union law is a new legal system when you compare it with national law and international law. Is that true? Yes. Therefore, um, the development of this new legal system is also based on the interpretation of EU law, including the EU founding treaties, the EU amending treaties, the accession treaties, and secondary sources of EU law. Who has jurisdiction to interpret European Union law? It is the Court of Justice. We have said that the Court has the monopoly to interpret European Union law. The second function of the courts of the European Union is, as all courts in the world, they, sorry? Judge. They judge. What do you mean with that? Um, no, what do they, what, yes, Dennis? They resolve the disputes, I mean, the actions mm. brought by the Commission, for example, uh, we said that the European Commission can take an action against member states. And uh, in this case, for example, the Court of Justice can decide on this issue. So uh, they can resolve disputes. I mean. Exactly. They settle disputes. Which disputes are these? These are the ones arising from European <laughs> Union law. Therefore, the second um, role, the function of the uh, courts of the European Union is to settle the disputes <laughs> arising from EU law. Thirdly, they review the legality of the acts and actions of EU institutions as well as the member states of the EU. They review the legality of the acts and actions of EU institutions as well as the member states of the EU. Yes, Dennis? Is there a difference between the function of review and appeal? I mean, um, are they same? Here, I want to mean that the courts have jurisdiction to, to see the disputes, not necessarily as a court of appeal. As you will be seeing, the Court of Justice of the EU is by no means an appeal court, not an appeal court uh, for the national courts of the member states. Mm -hmm. All right? So when I say review here, I, not, I do not mean to see as an appeal court. Appeal in Turkish? <coughs> exactly. Here, um, the, the EU courts see these actions, it see these um, cases as the courts of first instance, uh, whether on whether the actions of the EU institutions are uh, in accordance with European Union law. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. So, if I didn't understand correct, um, there is no uh, difference. Between, they just have um, different cases, I guess, with Court of Justice and General Court. Uh, I will come to that. They do not appeal to each other. Um, the, the certain decisions of the General Court may be appealed before the Court of Justice. 
the certain decisions of the general court may be appealed before the court of justice. But both of the courts deal, may deal with the actions as the courts of first instance, OK? okay. There is a difference. We will, we will come to that, all right? Uh, let me finish this part first. And lastly, last function of the courts is to fill the gaps that may exist in the EU legal system. This is also related with the fact that EU law is a new legal system. The founding treaties especially are drafted in an abstract manner and they have to be interpreted or, in other words, construed. Have you heard? Construed. Um, this is a verb, noun is construction, uh, in con construction or to construe the rules of construction, for example, the rules of interpretation it means. This is, um, uh, this is mostly used in English legal system to mean interpretation, all right? Therefore, um, the courts of the EU also have the power or have the jurisdiction to interpret the European Union law. Um, before we will move to these type of actions under the jurisdiction of EU courts, uh, I will mention three important characteristics of the jurisdiction of the EU, uh, uh, the Court of Justice of the EU. There we will be speaking about three main characteristics of the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice of the EU. So these are the characteristics of jurisdiction, not the courts themselves. Is it clear? Yes. Um, <clears throat> we will be first speaking about limited jurisdiction. The first characteristic is limited jurisdiction. What could this be? Limited jurisdiction. Yes, Oikyo? Uh, I fear that they fear that the Court of Justice, justice would be a constitutional court that the courts didn't have limited jurisdiction and they would be able to uh, make decisions on everything that they want. Hmm. It wouldn't be a supranational organization. It would turn the court into an international organization. And of course, uh, we said that uh, they were, for example, when they said that the, um, the prime minister hmm. issue, I, I related this with the prime minister issue. France and Netherlands uh, were afraid that it would... That is foreign uh, minister? Yeah. But, when we were talking about the high representative. Yes, foreign minister. Uh, foreign minister, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, they feared that it would uh, become a state. So if the courts didn't have limited jurisdiction, then it would be like uh, undermining the nation, undermining the member state. That's mm. I... No, we should l relate this with a principle of EU law, which you have heard before. Mm -hmm. Limited jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. There, are, there is an important criticism against court of justice, but the reason is that the court sometimes is interpreting the law too much, mm -hmm. and it is um, criticized because of uh, acting as if it was a legislator. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, sometimes in some areas, the court has a, has a big space to interpret, and it sometimes therefore criticized as if acting as if it was a legislator itself. But here, limited jurisdiction must be related to a, an important principle of EU law, which you have heard last week. Yes, Enes? Can it be separation of powers? No. <coughs> yes, Gül? The principle of limited powers. The principle of limited powers, what would that mean? Yes? The union and the courts are limited by the founding treaties. The areas, they can legislate the areas in funding treaties on. Um, yes, but since this is a court, can we say legislate? 
the legislator would legislate. The court would? Judge. Judge. Yes. Therefore, as all EU institutions of the European Union, the courts act according to the principle of limited powers. This, therefore, limited jurisdiction is one very good example of the principle of limited powers for the EU institutions, meaning that the courts of the European Union can only see the cases or can only see those actions provided under the founding treaties. <laughs> Other disputes arising from European Union law shall continue, to, shall, shall continue to be seen by the national courts of the member states, of course. Therefore, if a type of action is provided in the founding treaty under the jurisdiction <clears throat> of the Court of Justice, then it will only be the court of justice to see this type of action. For instance, actions for infringement. Do you remember those actions? We will be speaking about those today. Actions <coughs> for infringement. İhlal <coughs> davası in Turkish. What was it about? Mm. Acting against the treaties. Who? Uh, the member states. Exactly. The, when the member states act uh, in conflict with the founding treaties, the Commission may determine that there is a breach of EU law and therefore may take a member state before the Court of Justice. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. These actions are under the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. Can any national court find jurisdiction for itself for actions for infringement? Can a national court of a member state? say that I will have jurisdiction to see actions for infringement from now on? No. no. If, if it say, even if it says, would this have any legal consequence? Any binding effect? No. Not at all. There, this would have no effect at all. Why? Because this is provided under the limited jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. Secondly, the Court of Justice itself is also bound by this principle of limited jurisdiction, meaning that even if a dispute is arising from EU law, the court cannot see it if it is not provided under its own jurisdiction. <coughs> is that true? Yes, the Court of Justice cannot say, oh, I will have jurisdiction to see this case without having a clear provision in the founding treaties, all right? This is limited jurisdiction. Secondly, we will speak about compulsory jurisdiction. We will speak about compulsory jurisdiction. What would that mean? What is that in Turkish? You can't find this in the book. You should take notes if you uh, want to have them written, all right? What is compulsory jurisdiction? Yes? I'm not sure, but I imagine it means that they can't refuse a case when it is brought to them. No. Okay. Um, um, we will say something else here. What is that in Turkish? Zorunlu yargı yetkisi. What do we mean here? That means there is also non-compulsory jurisdiction for certain courts? Yes. Um, yes, Umut? Even if the parties are not accept you as the um, judiciary <coughs> organ, hmm. still they, are, um, they have to oblige the position. No, no. <laughs> Um, this means that um, the EU, the, the Court of Justice of the EU, shall have jurisdiction to see these cases 
provided under the founding treaties, independent from the will or recognition or consent of the parties. Normally, the rule for international courts is non-compulsory jurisdiction, normally, okay? Meaning that, for example, if two states would like a dispute between them to be seen by International Court of Justice, International Court of Justice in Turkish, Ulusas Adalet Divanı, first, they have to make an agreement accepting the jurisdiction of this court. Do you understand? <clears throat> For the parties to the disputes provided in the EU's founding treaties, there is no such need to make such an agreement. The courts of the European Union shall have jurisdiction independent from the will in Turkish, is take consent, on I, or recognition tanıma, of the parties to the dispute. Therefore, this is the rule of the European Union law, the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. The parties to the dispute will, will have no need to make such an agreement beforehand as a principle. All right? In law, as you know, the principles always have exceptions. exceptions. This rule, therefore, has two exceptions. Meaning that in these two following exceptional situations, the parties to the dispute must make an agreement if they want their dispute to be seen by the Court of Justice of the EU. All right? So this is about the characteristic of the decision. This is still, no, no, about the characteristic of jurisdiction. But for it to be binding, uh, normally, for the decision to be binding. What normally, decision? Uh, the decision of the court. Uh, okay. Yeah, to, be, to, to that to be binding, uh, normally the countries have to make an agreement of recognition. Not, but, not here. But in here, no. So isn't it also about the characteristic of the decision? No, this is a characteristic of jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And this is the characteristic of jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. That if, for example, the Commission considers that a member state is in breach of EU law, the Commission does not have to go to that member state and say, let's make an agreement because I want to take you before the Court of Justice. Or if um, a member state finds a breach of another member state uh, that uh, it is in breach of EU law, it, they do not have to agree on an agreement to see the, to their dispute to be seen by the Court of Justice, okay? The compulsory jurisdiction, therefore, has uh, two exceptions. The first one, <coughs> is that when, uh, in, okay, when there is a private law or a public law contract concluded by the EU or on behalf of the EU, the Court of Justice shall have jurisdiction to see the dispute arising from this agreement only if its jurisdiction, its jurisdiction is provided under an arbitration clause in the agreement or in the contract. The Court of Justice, therefore, shall have jurisdiction to see the disputes arising from private or public law contracts concluded by the EU or on behalf of the EU. I will say it again, no worries. Only if its jurisdiction is provided 
under an arbitration clause in this agreement, in this contract, provided by Article 272 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. OK, what did I say? For requirements of this provision to be applied, first, we need to have a private law contract or a public law contract concluded by the EU or on behalf of the EU. The first requirement is, therefore, we need to have a private law contract or a public law contract which is concluded by the EU or on behalf of the EU. Can the EU conclude a private law contract? Yes. Yes, like... <clears throat> what kind of agreement could this be? A contract, a private law contract? They can buy land in order to create an institution. Exactly, they can buy a land, an immovable, they can buy a certain number of laptops, they can uh, make a, a, a rental agreement, uh, for example, for the offices of the European Commission, etc. It can also be a public law contract. For example, uh, the European Union uh, signs certain public law agreements with third countries, such as Turkey. Okay? Ankara Agreement is a kind of that agreement between the EU and Turkey. The agreement is a type of mixed agreement. As you will be seeing, one party to this agreement is EU and member states of the European Union, and the other party is Turkey. So in such agreements, therefore, this is the first requirement that there should be an agreement signed by the EU or on behalf of the EU, on behalf of the EU in Turkish. Exactly. OK. Secondly, the Court of Justice uh, sorry, the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice, the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice must have been provided under a special arbitration clause in that agreement. Um, you may not know about arbitration clauses or jurisdiction clauses yet, OK? Um, jurisdiction clauses in Turkish, yetki kayıtları. Arbitration clauses in Turkish, tahkim kayıtları. Provide, the, the jurisdiction clauses, provide for a court to see disputes arising from this agreement, although the court, this court, would not have normally had jurisdiction. This is jurisdiction clause. Arbitration clause is something else. In the jurisdiction clause, you refer jurisdiction to a court. In the arbitration clause, you refer jurisdiction to arbitral tribunal, hakem heyeti, okay? Um, this is a separation we make in international private law um, classes. You will be seeing in the fourth class. Uh, but here, we, it, is, it is sufficient to note that the court of justice will see these disputes only if its jurisdiction is clearly provided in the contract. For example, uh, imagine a sales contract concluded by the EU. The parties to the dispute should specifically write in a provision, in a clause in that agreement, that the disputes arising from this contract shall be seen by the Court of Justice. OK? Such a special uh, clause exists in Ankara Agreement as well. According to Ankara Agreement, the Court of Justice shall have jurisdiction to see the disputes arising from this agreement and to interpret this agreement. 
Okay? Normally, would the court have jurisdiction to see these disputes? No. The court has jurisdiction to, to see these disputes because it is clearly provided in the founding treaty. Okay? Uh, sorry, in the uh, clause in that agreement. All right? You understand this? Or no? Yeah, that's good. Yes, of course. So the parties decide on the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice of the Agreement. I mean, the parties decide on the agreement and they add clause. Uh, to give jurisdiction to the Court of Justice. Exactly. When the party, okay, this is not an issue under the compulsory jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. If this was an issue provided in the founding treaties, then there would have been no need for such a clause. But this is not provided in the founding treaties as such. So, but the, part, the founding treaty under 272 gives the parties this opportunity. It says, if you want the Court of Justice, to, uh, to solve your disputes, then put a clause in your agreement. Clause in Turkish? Provision. Hüküm, kayıt, clause. Therefore, you have to put a clause in your agreement, saying that we want, as the parties to this dispute, our dispute to be solved by the Court of Justice. These clauses are very important. We call them jurisdiction clause or arbitration clause. There is a, uh, there is a freedom in international law to choose a court uh, for your disputes uh, to be solved. All right, you will be seeing that later. Yes. Um, can we uh, explain the first principle again, the first exception? I'm... This is still the first. Okay. Um, no, it is not clear? Who would like to explain? The first exception. No, I just thought that this is the second requirement. No, this is a second requirement for the first exception. Okay, who would like to explain the first exception? Yes, Öke. Okay. When there's a private law contract or a public law contract uh, that is concluded by either the EU or on behalf of the EU, normally the Court of Justice don't have jurisdiction, jurisdiction over these uh, contracts. However, uh, if there is an arbitration clause in the agreement, uh, then this uh, clause gives the Court of Justice jurisdiction to see the case. Okay? No? Why not? <laughs> uh, um, did you understand the limited jurisdiction of court? Yes. Did you understand the compulsory <clears throat> jurisdiction of court? What is compulsory jurisdiction? When it is stated in the... Uh, what is stated? Uh, jurisdiction limits. What does it mean? Which you case? said when it is provided in the treaties. What is it there? Uh, which cases are going to be... Okay, before the okay. Normally, I, uh, for, the, uh, for the undergraduate course, I speak about nine type of cases, all right? There are nine types of cases provided in the treaties under the compulsory jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. Meaning that for these nine types of cases, the parties do not make an agreement to give jurisdiction to the court, to refer jurisdiction to the court. All right? When the dispute is arisen, one of the parties, the plaintiff, goes to the court right away. And the Court of Justice will not ask for a special agreement referring jurisdiction to itself. Is that clear? This is the rule. However, in two exceptional situations, if the parties want their dispute to be seen by the court, they have to make a special agreement. But it also has to be about the EU. Wait, wait, wait, wait, wait. We, we said two exceptional situations. The first of these exceptions is about contract made by the EU or on behalf of the EU, okay? For instance, you make an agreement with the European Union, all right? You have a, a, a bookstore in Brussels and the European Commission uh, orders, uh, for example, calendars for 2020 from your book, bookstore, say uh, 1,000 calendars, all right? You make an agreement with that. Normally, the disputes that may, have, that may arise from this contract will not be seen by the Court of Justice. Why not? It is not 
they provide it in the treaties. Exactly. It is not provided in the treaties. However, you may prefer, as a party of this uh, contract, that your dispute should be seen by the Court of Justice. Is that possible? Yes, there is one possibility. It is provided under 272 of the founding treaty. What does it say? If you want your dispute as a party to this contract to be seen by the Court of Justice, you have to put a clear uh, clause in your, in your contract with the European Commission. Okay? This clause, as you will be seeing later in the fourth grade, it has the force of a special agreement. You make an agreement here, uh, referring jurisdiction to the Court of Justice. All right? Is it similar to Yetki Amash? Exactly. It is exactly the same with the jurisdiction agreements in terms of its uh, effect. All right? The Court of Justice will solve this action, that means. All right? Since they have not taken uh, private international law yet, all right, there might be certain problems with understanding, but uh, very welcome to ask further questions. Is that clear now? Sure? Yeah. All right. Gül, is it clear now? All right. Uh, therefore, um, you had to put an arbitration clause in the contract to provide jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. Second exception, which is provided under Article 273 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, the Court of Justice shall also have jurisdiction in any dispute between the member states which relates to a subject matter of the founding treaties if it is provided under a special agreement between the parties. For this exception, therefore, to apply, what do we need? Um, but before a special agreement, we need? A dispute, between member a dispute between the member states. Second, we need this dispute to be about subject matter of the founding treaty. Subject matter in Turkish? Konu, dava konusu, konusu, bu kurcu antlaşmanın subject matter of a case, dava konusu, burada kurcu antlaşmanın konusu. Therefore, we need a dispute between the member states arising from or related with the subject matter of the founding treaties. And third, the parties to the dispute, that is to say, the member states should or must provide for the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice under a special agreement. They have to make an agreement referring jurisdiction to the Court of Justice. All right? Before the dispute. Before the dispute, usually. OK? Uh, this exception is provided under Article 273, but it is not very much implemented. Can you guess why? Uh, and these, uh, not, not really, but if there is a dispute between the member states. It doesn't relate to a subject matter of the uh, it founding is, It is always mostly related with the subject matter of the founding treaties, but. They want to preserve their interests. No. In the Why don't we really need to insert this provision very often? There is no special agreement between states. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Is there a need normally to insert this provision? No. Yes, what's your name? Uh, Betul. Betul. Maybe these disputes are uh, covered in the nine cases you mentioned. Bravo, Betul, yes. Because there is a dispute between the member states, imagine. 
it is related with the subject matter of the founding treaty, uh, then in the most of the cases, this is something provided under the compulsory jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. This would be related with the nine type of cases under the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice. Is that clear? Is compulsory jurisdiction clear? Sure? Good. Third is exclusive jurisdiction. <clears throat> what would that mean, exclusive jurisdiction? In Turkish. Münhasır yetki. What would that mean in English? Someone else? Exclusive jurisdiction. You can guess. Yes, Dennis? Uh, only this, uh, the Court of Justice of the European Union have the jurisdiction to see this uh, dispute. Mean only meaning? The sole... Yes, yeah, so only meaning excluding which courts? National courts. And? General court. No, no. International. international courts. We exclude national and international courts. Exclusive jurisdiction means uh, in the following nine type of actions, or the, the following nine type of actions shall, can only be seen by the court of justice. No national court or international court can have jurisdiction to these cases. The nine type of actions, therefore, cannot be brought before any other court than the Court of Justice of the European Union. Attention, these three characteristics apply both for Court of Justice and General Court, all right? I do not any, every time say Court of Justice and General Court, I just say Court of Justice sometimes because I'm used to that, or sometimes I say Court of Justice of the European Union, all right? Um, first, following nine type of actions. First, actions for infringement. Actions for infringement. In Turkish, ihlal davaları. Actions for infringement. Second, actions for failure to act. Actions for failure to act. In Turkish, İhmal veya hareketsizlik davaları. Third, actions for annulment. Actions for annulment. In Turkish, iptal davaları. Four, actions for damages. Actions for damages in Turkish, tazminat davaları. Fifth, do you know any? Yes, you know. Staff cases. Six, actions. <coughs> Uh, uh, no, no. Actions uh, arising from money judgments, money judgments, or actions related with money judgments. I will explain each of them. How many? Seven? Six. Now we are at seven. Seven. Uh, actions arising from the statute of. European Central Bank, actions arising from the statute of European Central Bank. Eight, actions arising from the statute of European Investment Bank. And nine, the preliminary rulings procedure. All right. What was eight? Can you repeat? 
actions are arising from the statute of European Investment Bank. All right, let's give 10 minutes break and then we continue. <coughs>